Hey everyone, this is Fran from the 5 Minute Modeler and today we're going to finish out our South Grand Rapids turn. As I discussed in the previous episode, this job runs south from Grand Rapids to South Grand Rapids to service several industries. But before we do that, just want to remind you to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button if you will. It's free, doesn't cost you a cent, and it helps me out. So here's the track plan and the industries that are in the area. We showed this in the last video. Uh, we have Jenison Brothers Flooring, which is the largest uh, industry there. And it gets up to four cars per week. Wood is trucked in and then finished products are sent out by both truck and rail. We have Central Freight, which is a freight clearing house. Uh, they get one or two cars uh, a week. Uh, Placer Canvas is a large provider of canvas, tents, and awnings for consumer and commercial uses, primarily inbound deliveries of raw cotton and other material. Occasionally, there'll be an outbound load of finished products. And then we have the Texaco Oil Distribution Facility, which supplies petroleum products for industrial use. This job is remarkable in that it runs within the yard limits and all industries have southbound trailing switches. In order to facilitate the switch job, the train runs with the engine and caboose pushing cars southbound, then begins moving the cars as needed. So here's our switch list for today. The yard engineer did not block these cars, so it makes our job a bit more difficult. We have three cars to pick up at Central Freight with two to drop off, four cars to pick up at Jenison Brothers and four to spot, and then Placer Canvas has no cars, but we have to move their cars because they're on a common spur with Jenison Brothers. And, uh, and then Texaco Oil will have one pickup and one set out. Our train is pushing southward. The first job will be to pick up the cars at Central Freight. There are three box cars and we need to replace them with two that are on the manifest. As we back into the siding, the brakeman makes sure the cars are properly coupled. train moves forward and once past the switch begins to push the cars down the yard lead. It will uncouple the cars but because our first car required is the grand trunk box car we'll uncouple the cars right behind it and then pull the train forward making sure we don't block 105th street any longer than necessary. train pulls forward to clear the switch, then backs up into the siding. Before pushing the car to its final spot, we need to get the other car uh, ready to shove as well. So, unfortunately, this car is at the other end of the train. So the train will pull past the switch, shove the cars across 105th Street, and then uncouple behind the New York Central boxcar that is required. Now the engine pulls forward and backs down the switch, 
once again crossing 105th Street and coupling with the Grand Trunk boxcar we previously set out. Now the engineer will shove the two cars to their proper spots for the customer. Once the cars are uncoupled and the brakes are set, the engine and caboose can pull forward. This set out and pickup required 11 moves. Had the cars been blocked together, how many moves would it have taken? Can you see if there was a better way for this engineer to deliver these cars in less than 11 moves? I'd like you to put your answer in the comments. Just see what you guys think. Next on the run, we need to head north to the Jenison Brothers Spur. This track, as mentioned, serves two industries. We first need to pick up the cars we left on the yard lead, leaving the cars we picked up from Central Freight behind. We'll come back for those when we're done switching. First order of this job is to clear the track of the cars so we can spot the inbound cars. This is a fairly easy part of the job as we just need to back into the siding and move down as required to couple all cars to our existing train. The engineer needs to pull all the cars out of the siding and push them down the main line. Uh, Jenison Brothers has four loading doors for cars and the, and the cars are required to be spotted at the proper door. Again, the cars aren't block, blocked properly, so the engineer and brakeman have to figure this one out before they start moving cars. switch list calls for the Ann Arbor boxcar to be dropped at door D, which is the closest to 105th Street. 
Unfortunately, that car is right behind the caboose, so the engineer pulls forward and once past the switch, backs in and temporarily drops the car in the siding. The engineer heads back to the train to get the next car, which is the Detroit Toledo and Ironton boxcar that will be spotted at door C. Once connected to the car and uncoupled, they'll pull forward with the lone boxcar past the switch, then back the train up to the Ann Arbor car connecting the couplers. After uncoupling from the DT&I car, the engine pulls forward past the switch again, backs down the main to the train. Door B calls for the Burlington boxcar, and door A requires the ACY, Akron, Canton, and Youngstown boxcar. Fortunately, these last two cars are in the right order for setup. The only additional car is the tank car destined for Texaco, but we'll drop that after we finish dropping these cars. Again, once uncoupled, the engineer must pass the switch with the cars back into the siding and couple to the Ann Arbor and DT&I cars. Mm -hmm. Now that they are coupled and the brakes are released, the engine shoves the cars forward towards 105th Street. The engineer first spots the Ann Arbor car in front of door D, then the brakeman sets the brake and uncouples the car. The engineer pulls forward and they rinse and repeat for the next three doors. At this point, our crew has the tank car and the caboose, so since the switch to Texaco is at the front of the spur, they pull ahead past the Texaco switch, then reverse into the siding. This industry is gated, so the gate must be unlocked, and once done, the train can back in and pick up the existing tank car.
pulling past the switch out to the main, they back down and drop that tank car. After securing the brakes, they take the other tank car, drop it at the appropriate location in the facility. Once uncoupled, they head out back to the main line. Here they back down to the waiting tank car, couple it to the caboose, then proceed to push toward the rest of the train. At this point, they need to return the two cars from place or canvas to their earliest location. So they pick these up from the cars on the main, head north again, back into the siding, and run the cars back. set the brakes, uncouple, and now they're heading back to the train. engineer couples to the cars left on the main, but they still need to back up into the yard lead in order to get the three cars pulled from Central Freight at the beginning. Now that the crew has its full train coupled, brakes are all released and they head back to Hewart Yard where the cars will be shuffled to their next locations. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and it really shows the importance of uh, blocking cars in the appropriate order. This is something that uh, most railroads would do uh, and it's probably why the yard engineer is getting uh, called into the office uh, into the, the dispatcher's office, as we saw in the last video. Um, but I, I'd love to hear your comments on how maybe these uh, moves could have been made more efficiently. So uh, please make your comments known and, and we'd love to see them. So thanks again for watching and uh, have a great week and stay warm.